Welcome back to another edition of Ego on Break. Uh, I'm your host Jay Andrews, and uh, joined by the laughable Logan Creed. So, uh, <laughs> my bad, y'all. Um, I didn't realize you get recorded. Yeah, this guy's got no filter, so sometimes it's funny. You taste this tea, you understand what I was taking or talking about. So, uh, yeah, definitely next time go back to Taco Bell and get yeah, tea, not sorry, Wendy's. Huh? I didn't know. So. Uh, you know, we missed last week, uh, 4th of July, all that good stuff, so it kind of got us in a bind. I was an operating room. Yeah, so uh, we're going to kick that back off. We want to go ahead and throw, uh, you know, send our condolences to uh, Vader, Matt, Capitelli, both. Mm -hmm. uh, also, it's a Memphis manager that just passed away. I believe his name was uh, Nat the Rat. Okay. Um, I have no idea. So send condolences uh, to him and his family as well. You, yeah. Um, I know Memphis, like the Memphis News did a story on him, so I think he was like he had been in Memphis forever, uh, like uh, okay. you know even throwback to when Memphis was a thing. So uh, definitely send our condolences out to all those guys. But uh, what's your favorite Matt Capitelli match? Do you yeah, know I, I don't even remember him having a match. Yeah, did uh, he? No, nah, I don't. Uh, I mean, he had OVW matches. Yeah, well, I understand that. But, but uh, I think that. that's where the tumor and stuff came. You know, that's when it all okay. showed up. Did he ever have a match on WWE? No, I don't think so. Other than yeah. like, if you take away tough enough, you know, because he was right. on tough well, enough. Yeah, so no, he got the crap kicked out my hardcore high. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what he was known for. Yeah, for know? sure, for sure. But uh, you know, when he and uh, Nitro or Morrison or Henning or whatever his name was at the time. <laughs> When they won, you know that they they almost had like a new rockers type look to them. Yeah. You know? So uh, I, I think they both had a lot of a lot of room to grow, and you never know if if it had not been for his, his illness, and you know he might have been the uh, the second guy in in uh, M and M. You know. Yeah, that's true. Um. So who knows? So uh, definitely, you know, sad times for that, and I'm sure his family is not doing well with the loss, but I'm. Yeah, because I think it was like something they expected, but something they didn't expect because he's done had so many surgeries and things like that, and it was almost routine at this point. Yeah. So, well, like I say, my I was in the operating room because my brother had a tumor in his shoulder. Mm -hmm. This is his second operation, and there there's that words to my mom, and my mom's like the greatest fucking thing to her ever. They might have got it all. Oh wow. And I looked at her. I go, Do you want to hear the mechanic tell you? I might have put all your lug nuts yeah. on the car. I might have fixed your car. Might you not. Know, I'm know, like, just that, drive that's, and, see, and she's like, that's great news show. You're looking at it in the positive, uh, a negative light. And I was like, no, I don't want to hear anybody say might have on anything to do with surgery. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. I mean, but, you know. Yeah, I definitely see your point. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, so then, no real memories of Matt Capitale? No, yeah, man, besides be the there. Tough Enough stuff, that's really all I remember of him. Yeah. I, there's an interview with Colt Cabana. I have not watched it yet. I was going to watch it. But uh, Colt Cabana talked about they actually knew each other from school. Yeah, from college. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was really cool. So that's really the only other thing I know about the guy. Right. And like I say, I knew he had the brain tumor and all that. And, you know, it's rough. Yeah, uh, for anybody sure. Anybody to die. For sure. Uh, what about, um, I, I know you don't have any of, of Nat the Rat, so, no, uh, I, I don't think I know I've he was anything. working, uh, like with some of the, uh, the Memphis promotions now up in that area, uh, cause I had seen him pop up a few places, but I, I didn't realize that he was such yeah, a big, you know, that he had that kind of long history of being in Memphis. I actually thought he was like a new guy when I first started seeing him. Uh, okay. And uh, then like once he once his passed away, some things got put out or whatever. Somebody had put out a bunch of cards uh, that were from like weekly television tapings or something. Mm -hmm. and he was on a lot of those. Oh, okay. And then uh, the Memphis News on a story on him. So. Um, so he worked up everywhere like Gene Jackson and some of those guys. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Area. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Um. But then Vader, I think that was the biggest surprise. You know, he had put out a while back that, you know, they'd only gave him so long to live. But he actually died from, like, complications of pneumonia. Like, he yeah. had caught pneumonia. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, as you get older, pneumonia will fucking yeah. kill you. Man. And it's I bad because, so people. you know, as a kid, you know, like, 63, 64 is ancient. But the closer you get to it, the more you realize it really ain't that old. No, you know, it's so, really not, man. Uh, because my family would be in their 80s and 90s. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think about it, like... You know, he, he, he wasn't even retirement age, you know, because most people retire yeah. at 65. Hell, he was, hell, he was still working. Yeah, he was like 63, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, Danny Vader, 
members? A lot. Yeah. Way more than I did Capitelli and sure the red. Alright, throw, throw some out there too. Uh, I don't know how old I was. I know I was living in Jackson at the time and I was still in school. But uh, watching him and Cactus Jack on uh, WCW Saturday Night. Right. And I, that was some of the first wrestling I really started watching, you know, because it was brutal. really a thing. <laughs> but uh, Saturday Night, you know, uh, 605. Yeah. And watching that and then watching them. I remember him power bombing uh, Cactus Jack on the ground outside. And I remember. Like Cactus didn't make it back in the ring, but he made it to his feet. And I yeah. remember him making this huge deal out of it. And then him uh, wrestling Sting about a thousand times. But the one I remember most, they did that uh, the White Castle of Doom, yeah. and it was a strap White match. Castle of Fear. Yeah, but it was a uh, strap whole match. And stuff. The vignettes were so hokey, but they were so good because they yeah. were so hokey. You know, it's crazy Had a because in the mask. Like they were almost like the precursor to uh, like the Lucha Underground yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. <laughs> so they were like little mini, you know, stories or whatever. Um, uh, then watch his Japanese stuff. His Japanese stuff, some yeah. of the best wrestling out there. Yeah, I watched. Um, this morning I'd watched a match between him and Stan Hansen in AWA. I know, okay. Yeah, no, it wasn't yeah, when he got yeah, his eyeball knocked bull. out. Well, he was still the baby yeah, bull. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, Leon White, the baby mm -hmm. bull. Um, but what I found interesting about him is I didn't realize this, but like uh, we had the same birthday. Like he was born on May fourteenth, and that's oh, okay. my birthday. Cool. So uh, I had a birthday with Vader. Didn't realize that, and didn't realize like he grew up in Compton. Yeah, I didn't know that um, part. But when he was like first born there and things like it compton was like the white rich subdivision type well, it wasn't changed, yeah huh? it wasn't like a gangster's paradise so to speak you so know vader was straight out of compton yeah he was straight out of compton and uh you know i, I wrestled uh, for a while under the white nerdy thing and my name was linwood because i was from linwood you know california or whatever and that's one of the towns he lived in was linwood oh, cool. so when they moved from uh compton they moved to linwood so it's like that's pretty awesome. So, uh, well, I do remember Rick Morgan telling me he was watching. Uh, they put out the best of the Clash of the Champions, I think mm -hmm. it was. And uh, he was telling me he's like, I watch Vader's match. He goes, that was like wrestling you. He goes, he's like beating the hell out of these guys. He's like, you're the same way. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Vader was uh, definitely UFC before yeah, UFC. Yeah, he you was. Know. Um, Did you ever see any of the stuff with him and Shamrock? A little bit, but I was going to say, I remember more of him from WCW than I do from WWF, even though I was, like, the WWF fan. Yeah. Um, I don't just for some reason, I guess the stuff that he really did there just really wasn't impactful, you know. No, they um, didn't do a lot with him, and he was hurt when he come in with his right. shoulder. So, so they couldn't do a lot. Like, I remember, like, he hit Kane with a rubber ranch or whatever. <laughs> yeah. like, that's that's kind of my other. Vader type, you know. Uh, but I, I do think like that's where I became a Vader fan was the Vader time, you yeah. know, because they they just built it up bigger than WCW would, you know. They you made know, it more uh, the thing. Did you ever hear where Cornette was telling the story as it's Vader's debut, mm -mm. and he comes out to the ring and uh, he's cutting a promo before Vader comes out, and he goes, "What time is it? It's Vader time!" And the crowd starts checking Vader time, Vader time. He comes to the back and Vince tells him, "Don't you ever do that again." Oh wow! Because it got over. Because it got over, and I'm like, "You're a heel, That's stupid." But you're a bad guy. You know, because bad guys aren't supposed to get cheered. Vader had a very little bit of a face run in WCW yeah. right toward the end of him leaving, and I was like, "This could be the perfect opportunity for him to be the good guy for yeah. a change." Yeah. Uh, and I don't know how much you know after he, after the Leon White stuff, like how much of a baby face he was. I mean, he was really that big monster heel yeah. uh, for most of his career. Um, I think it would be a good, cool change, though. You know, think about it. He never did it. It's kind of like seeing yeah. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat as a heel. heel it never right. happened. Right. Now, do you know, uh, you know, he has a son that got into wrestling. Yeah. Um, and I know he was under developmental for a little while. It's like Jake Carter, maybe. He kind of looks like his dad. Yeah. He's and, uh, do you know if he's still there or if he got released really or what? Don't. I don't know either. I don't. I was going to look that up, and I, and I just really forgot to look it up. But, uh, you know, Vader was definitely, you know, I saw somewhere that where he said, like, um, like he was the first man his size to do the moonsault off the top rope. I say, I don't know if that's true. I, I don't either, but, like, that was kind of what he was but trying I, to do. It's possible. Yeah. But. 
I remember several guys back in that time period doing it, and yeah. he may have been the first. Because I know, like, uh, who were the real big fat twins? The headhunters. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. The uh, the headhunters from what Puerto Rico or whatever. Headhunter one and two. And Bam Bam did like a version of the moonsault, but he didn't go like straight back over. He kind of went back in well, a curve. He did his best moonsault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, it was like a back cross body. Yeah, you know? more or less. So, uh, but yeah, it was definitely uh, he was definitely just a guy that set the bar, you know, high for a lot of people, yeah. and definitely a guy that inspired a lot of people as well. So, uh, you know, kudos to uh, Vader. Uh, you know, but the cool thing about it, and I know it's not nothing cool about dying, no. but, you know, we all are going to die. But the cool thing is he's going to live on forever through tapes and videos and, and that thing because he did make such a, a big impact. Well, let me ask you this, and this is just me. I mean, I think they should have put him on in the Hall of Fame. There was no reason not to. I know they got to be all politically correct and have this race, that race, and this girl, and this and that. They, they do it. I mean, they've even admitted that's how they do it. But I'm like, dude, he was dying, you know, and they knew he was dying. Yeah. And then everybody puts out all these freaking little, you know, Twitters, and I'm just like, mm. well, my thing and about the Hall of Fame is, this year, yeah. how much you Well, my thing about the Hall of Fame is, if you put everybody <coughs> in it that deserved to be in it at one time, there'd be nobody else left to do it. Yeah, but this you dude's know. dying. Well, hey, there's guys die every day. Oh, well, they you knew know. he was dying. Though. Um, I mean, would it have been a heartfelt moment for sure? Yeah. You know, because now you can't have. Um, it. I mean, they can still put him in. <laughs> uh, I think when Cool of Cactus would have inducted him and then him would tell us, yeah. I mean, how hard yeah. would that have been? Yeah, definitely would have been really I mean, cool. because he inducted Stan Hansen a few years ago. Right. So there's no reason not to do it. You right. Know? It's, but, I, I mean, I, I definitely think you're going to see him in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it may not be, year. you know, right away or whatever. But, yeah. you know, eventually everybody you think deserves to be in the Hall of Fame will be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. You know? Uh, you just got to get to that point to where, you know, you can only, it's, it's almost like booking a wrestling card or a wrestling event. You can only get so many people on it, you know. Yeah, but some um, people they put in there, you kind of going. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like Drew Carey? Yep. Yeah, there for you sure. Go. Well, I mean, he was in the Royal Rumble. Oh, shit. So, uh, Vader was on Boy Meets World. They wanted a TV star. There you go. <laughs> he was also in a movie called uh, Fist of North Star. He was in, uh, what, he in Major Pain? Major or was that Bam Pain. Bam? I don't think he was in Major Pain. He was... I know he was in Fist of North Star. Might have been Bam Bam. I know he was in Boy Meets World. Yeah. But uh, I know in Major Pain, there was like... The the dad comes in or whatever, and mm -hmm. he's like, I'll put this boot upside your head. And then he like kicks him in the knee and then whatever. And he's finally on his knees, he kicks him in the head. Yeah, I think that was Bam Bam Boot. Was it Bam Bam? I, I can't I'm remember. Not sure. I, I don't remember either. Uh, is there any Bam Bam versus Vader matches? Have yeah, you seen it? I've yeah. never seen it, but I know there's some. I know there. they tagged in Japan, uh -huh, but they they fought each other. So too. I didn't know if they. I've had never seen it, but that matches. I bet that'd be a yeah, beast of a match. Yeah. So, you watch anything else? Like, let's uh, let's get off the sad notes and onto the Michael wedding. Jackson DDT. A while ago, <laughs> the Mi you. Michael Jackson DDT is by far best thing I've seen in a long time Maybe. that uh, it should go viral but it won't because I it's not my it dying. Like I said, it got spread all over the moon. So, super cool to see uh, the Moonwalk DDT. Uh, it, it was definitely a highlight of my lunch break. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I definitely dug that. And I, I started watching last night, I started watching uh, Championship Wrestling from Florida from like 1976. Mm. And I discovered a lost nature boy that I don't know a lot of people even realize there was another nature boy. I know Landale, Flair. Kirby. What? The nature boy, <laughs> Roger Kirby. No. Um, did not, he had the long blonde hair, he had like a Fu Manchu, like he was like a jobber guy, but he was the nature boy, Roger Kirby. And I was like, holy smokes. Uh, the Lost Nature Boy. So, uh, <laughs> you got to put him, you know, you got your Paul Lee's, you know. Who is he as a wrestler? Oh, horrible. <laughs> oh, I've never heard of him. But I'll tell you a guy that I did watch that I want to watch more of, Thunderbolt Patterson. Oh, yeah, that's so much. Holy it. smoke. Charisma out the wazoo. Yeah, his promos um, are awesome. Work great, not so much. Yeah. Uh, well, now, this is just him in a match, but now. Like quick, they would. Yeah, yeah, like. Well, like one match I, I watched, it was uh, the Missouri Mauler, and uh, Classic. I can't remember who he wrestled, 
but I mean, he literally won with an arm lock, with a uh, hammer lock. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, how much wrestling had changed from the 70s to the 80s, you know, uh, was just crazy. But you had like Dusty Rhodes on there and, uh, oh man, somebody had put a bounty out on Dusty. Oh, yeah. And uh, I see the guy in my hand, uh, but I can't think of who Sullivan? No, 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 no. Sullivan no. This time? no. Uh, uh, Rick Flair? Mm-mm, nope. It, it was somebody yeah, like a I lower card that. guy that you... Uh, oh, it was... Uh, it was I was going to say it was Steve Kern, but it wasn't Steve Kern. I give up. Uh, man, I don't, I don't remember. I have to go back and look. But I, I saw, saw a young too, Steve Kern on dude. it. Yeah. And, uh, but the they had put like a $10,000 bounty out on him. And, the, mall, and uh, the Missouri Mauler had paralyzed half his face. Like his eye was all swollen and puffy and it was drooping down. Um, oh. So yeah, so it was it was weird, but like he's like you didn't uh you didn't earn the whole, you know you didn't uh finish the job you only you know partially done. He's like well I'll I'll finish it, and uh, the guy comes back out and he's like you know I've decided to give give the mauler a second chance to earn the ten thousand dollars or whatever. So he promised me he's gonna finish the job of you know destroying dusty roads or whatever. And for the life of me I can't remember who the guy was, but I wish I could. Was it a manager? No, no. Okay. It was just like a, like I'm gonna compare it to like Brutus Beefcake. You know, I know it wasn't okay. Brutus or like Honky Tonk Man or like that, but before they were that, you know. Yeah. Um, but you're like, oh, I know that guy, but he didn't, he was he was a big thing, but he wasn't like not a big thing, you know. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and I, I wish I for the life of me I could remember who it was. I'm gonna go back and look it up. No idea. When I get through here, but uh, it was cool. So uh, I look forward to watching a lot of more of the uh, championship wrestling from Florida. Yeah, so uh only other wrestling i've really watched lately is the slw stuff and uh the match i wound up watching i really wound up liking was uh your buddy kelvin heights yeah big k big k big kg no k barking gangster but uh it was him and uh for the television title who, who has the title? Uh, that's what I was trying to say. I remember without uh, giving away that I couldn't remember his name. Uh, Shit. I can't remember. Let me see. I can't did, did, remember. did BK win? No, actually, he's a run in. Oh, man. But good match. Like, was a really it? good match. You know, what he, you know what he's missing? He's missing that paper crown you get from Burger King. Hey, hey, fans, if you're out there and you're coming to our July 28th event at the Hideaway, bring Big K a Burger King crown. I think he definitely needs it. So, uh, I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Southern Legacy Wrestling. <laughs> Good God. What's wrong with you? BKG. B hey, I can't help it. That's Why what the guy. Do he's that got it me, wrote on his tights. B. You did do that. Okay, G. but I still say BKG. It. It's right on his tights. If that's not his name, if it's not his initials, why is it on his tights? It's, it's silent. <laughs> Told you. So, uh, you yeah, know, I didn't name him the Burger King Gangster. The fans uh -huh. did. At an uh, upcoming event, they were going to have Wildfire Tommy Rich and Bullet Bob Armstrong. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's on, very uh, cool. July 14th. So, uh, Damn, what you know, it's, it's not my fault that is. You know, his finishing move is the Whopper with cheese. I mean, that's not my problem. So, he's one name to that. So He's going to whop you. Yeah, maybe. He may bring me I a Whopper. I wouldn't blame him. Hey, Big KG, if you bring me a Whopper with uh, fries and maybe like a Oreo milkshake, maybe we could call a truce. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Well, you could call him G? It's on his tights. That, that don't mean you got to say it. Oh, well, I, you know. Randy Orton wrote Orton on his tights. Doesn't want anybody to call him Orton. You well, know. He just had RKO on there. What? That was his finish. Maybe BKG is his finish. Hey, if cool. BKG is the name of your finisher, I apologize. That might be it. I mean, that definitely could. You make a good point. Randy Orton had RKO on his. Uh, you know, I heard the K in RKO stood for Kelvin. Randy Kelvin Orton. I don't know if that's true or not. I truly don't know. <laughs> We had to have ask BK. BK, do you share a name with I get Randy Orton? I can't find this dude's name. But, uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. But check out the, the championship wrestling from Florida. Like, the, the mid-70s, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. So, that's cool. Um, I don't know, uh, Lord Humongous was... That might, it, says, a, it doesn't say his name, but it says the monster is coming to Southern Legacy. And it shows this picture. Yeah, see a black screen. So, <laughs> it's a it's a, a Jason Lord mask with mask. fire. 
Yeah. So uh, I wonder what version of Lord Humongous we're going to get. 947. Yeah. I think you should do that character. I could. I mean, you I got get, the body fart. I can get wind going to the ring. <laughs> so, uh, hey guys, this has been <laughs> Ego on Break. July the 28th at the Hideaway, Jackson, Mississippi, Fight Night 4. Um, What's the one match you know about? Uh, main event, Ray Fury takes on O'Shea Edwards for the Pride title. He was surprised when I told him that. So, uh, looking forward to that. He told me he thinks he can take him. I mean, I definitely think if uh, if Fury can block the uh, the back. cheating ways of O'Shea Edwards. Crocodile elbow, huh? <laughs> so, uh, find out. Uh, the hideaway. We got Dax Anthony returning. Would you save me if there was an alligator coming off and the only way you could break, stop the alligator was drop an elbow? I'd probably do a knee drop. I'm better at knee drops than elbows. Now before we go, I wanted to play okay. a game with you since we ain't doing the pie thing for a while because I damn the pie. Yeah, or chocolate cake yeah. up your nose. Yeah, so after you took it, you won't take no more, do you? Yeah. Uh, Alright, let's play a game real quick. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven moves. If you had to take one of these moves as a finish, which Don't, one would you rather take? You got to use the official name for that. Okay, I will. I, just, I didn't know the name okay. of it. My bad. All right, if I got to take one of these moves. Uh, the big wiggle, okay. the worm, the five knuckle shuffle, the people's elbow, d low leg drop, or the penis plex. Which one would you rather take? Uh, uh, the people's elbow. Really? Why? Because the Rock's most famous guy on the list. Did he ever go viral with the with the people's elbow though? Nobody got paid a lot of money for it. Well, see, I, in all honesty, <laughs> I would take the Phoenix Plex because it's going to go viral and I'll be seen all over the world making a fool out of myself. Well, see, I have a theory on that. It's but that's it's only going to go viral. Thingy. It's only going to go viral if you have a big enough name to make it go viral because they've seen it so much. So, how many times has that been involved in a match that you hadn't seen it? Well, see, I'm going to do it and like I'm going to take the bump all the way to the floor. Off the that apron. may go viral. Off the apron. So, yeah, right over the top. Right either the that apron. or uh, probably the worm. The worm. I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, just because it's such a like crowd interactive moment where they can spell out worm and who ha he and all that kind of stuff. So hey, they do spell worm. I forgot, yeah. I forgot about that. So uh, one of those two, just because there's a lot of uh, crowd interactive. I, I, I'm not a big fan of. I'm a big fan of Joey Ryan, but I'm not a big fan of that move just because I'm not a big fan of Grab holding on to things. The, yeah. You ever accidentally grab somebody by that while in a wrestling match? Uh, I did one time and I freaked out. I'm just saying no. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Uh, like I went for the body slam and my hand just caught. I was like, ah! I was like, and then I like stopped. I was like, grabbed it. I was DDT. He was like, I thought you said suplex. I said, yeah, we had to stop right there. I couldn't. <laughs> he goes, yeah, I felt you kind of freak out. I said, yeah, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> and that's been this issue of Ego on Break. Uh, I don't know about his uh, seven moves of doom over here, but uh, we will see you <sighs> next week. Later.